What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Slime Rancher. My name is Splattercat. Sorry about that. I had to fix this one actually. I had to go back through and fix this one. I have a little addendum here at the beginning of the episode. It had the wrong audio on it. It appears to be some kind of bug with the way that things exported with the audio. Ah well, not going to explain that to you. We're here to have some fun, play this colorful little game. Today you're going to be getting two episodes to make up for the fact that I had to pull the one yesterday. This one especially so welcome on back in taking a look around here at these pink little slimies in today's episode we will probably focus on i think feeding another one of the gordos would probably be a pretty good plan we'll gather up some carrots here fire that plort over to that side just pink poo flying through the air because we have no we have no need of it i have no need of you pink poo so fly away from me some poor bastard scuba diving out there's like Poink! on the side of his head Yeah! who's throwing poo I mean, if you really think about it, we've got like a potato gun right now that just launches poo. It also sucks up the poo, too. So that's pretty good. Oh, look at that. Our gold number is the best number that exists. That's pretty sweet. Oh, on this side, we need to feed these little guys, I think. Pretty sure they haven't eaten, like, eaten in a little while. Our chickens appear to be doing pretty well. We have our first little chickadoo on that side, so that's fantastic. We can look forward to a prosperous chickadoo. Oh, look at that. The mom gave it a kiss. See, there's nothing about this game that is not adorable. Just smooch. Baby chicken, I love you. Let me give her those kitty shits right here. Yeah, buddy, if only my cat's shit was valuable. Man, I'd be having all kinds of cash right now. Because my cats, they're just like never-ending tubes of shitting. That's all they do is eat and exude. Eat and exude. Eat and exude. All day long. Eat food, then exude. Alright, so that'll get us up to 907. So we're looking pretty good right there. Almost a thousand gold. Definitely some things that we can upgrade and take care of as we go through the game. I will probably upgrade this pen. But first, I don't really need high walls on my chicken pen. We can do spring grass, though, or a vitamizer. Spring grass will make it so I think that we, I think the vitamizer makes it so that they grow up faster. And then I think the spring, the little, the grass that gets inside of there with the bugs, I think it makes them give birth more frequently or something like that. I don't know. Nobody has time to read tooltips. That's not what life is all about. Spending all that time reading tooltips and not enough time living it. Back out onto the road we go. We still got that extra Q-berry sitting around inside of here, too. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe... Let me finish feeding you guys. And then we'll bounce back out to the field. Give them some time to generate us a little bit of revenue. Because if we don't have revenue, we're not going to be able to upgrade anything. That's the sad truth of the matter. Is that in lieu of revenue, it's like we're just going to sit here and do the same things over and over and over again. Pretty happy with the way this is panning out right now. We are making pretty good progress in our playthrough. I, I think the big stopgap that we're going to have to handle is we just need to get a whole bunch of slime keys and throw those into all the va like the various doors so that we can get to new areas and get things done. Like dinner. Inside of here, we have already unlocked this area, as I recall. So yes, our door all out of the way. Let's go ahead and have a look around and see what we can accomplish. I think there should be some pretty cool stuff in here. As I understand it, they have expanded some of the maps out. So there should be some new things to find out here as we bounce and jiggle around. So on this side, we appear to have a bunch of heartbeats. So I'm going to grab those real fast. Meanwhile, the rock slimes over to the other side. Chick-a-doo, 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 chick-a-don't, chick-a-what. All right, so those are all done there. Yeah, they appear to be having some kind of battle down here. Some kind of battle loving. I will take the stony chickadoos as well. Stony chickadoos turn into stony hens, which actually the cat slimes like them a lot better. Tabby slimes like them a lot better. I don't know why. They've got little rocky outcroppings on their faces and on their bodies. You'd think that would make them very, very difficult to digest and somewhat unpleasant to chew. Ooh, another treasure pod. Treasure pod. But yeah, you'd think that would make them a little bit more difficult to chew, but weirdly enough, not the case. The tabby slimes love them. Really, really love them. Out here, it looks like we've got... This area was here standard. We've got... Ow! Headbutted in the face. We've also got boom slimes laying around. These guys over here are doing some kind of handstand or advanced mating ritual that requires a little bit of upper body strength. I'm going to fire out the baby chickens, actually, so that I have room for other stuff. And we've got another treasure pod right there, and I can't suck them up. I realized that was the one verb that I hadn't tried. I hadn't tried to suck up the little things just yet, and so I figured I'd give it a go just to see what happens. Over here, we've got ourselves a pond, as I recall. Inside the pond, we'll find ourselves some puddle slimes. Puddle slimes produce puddle plorts, which are actually pretty valuable. I got the one plort right there. Where did the other one go? Flew off over my shoulder and vanished. Sorcery. Sorcery and witchcraft. A fecal man... Like, there's like a fecal mancer over here. You can't feed those, by the way. They just drink the water, and then they poop out the plorts every bit. 
but I don't see the plort that we had over here. I guess they might disappear when they hit solid land. Puddle plorts are very, very valuable, so keep that in mind. If you're ever in the area and you've got an extra inventory slot and you're heading back home or whatever, they can be worth upwards of 50, 60 bucks if the market is in the right direction. It should be right now because the market is largely dictated by how many plorts you sold recently. Like if you sell like 100 rock plorts, the next day, chances are the market, when it refreshes, is going to go down a little bit for rock plorts because you're flooding the market. You can also make silos, which allow you to store the plorts for later once the market equalizes and then do like a big burst. So you can do like a mass sell-off or whatever. This ledge right here is new, and this cave is new as well. So let's go have a look and see what's going on inside of here, because I'm all about new stuff when we've got a new series. Hello. Oh, it's a little lava area. I've never seen this before. Oh, and what are those? Ooh, a crystal slime, badass. Okay, let's gather up a couple of these. I'm gonna take these home and I'm gonna swap out one. Ooh, gold slime, gold slime. Ah, I tried, I tried. My reflexes are not good enough. My reflexes were not good enough. It looks like it hurts us when we stand on the little spiky things too. We'll need at least like seven of these for our pen to be really, really profitable because if we feed them doubles, that'll give us 14. We just fired baby chickens into lava because I'm cruel and heartless like that. About seven, I think, is about right down there. It doesn't look like there's anything else that we want to concern ourselves with. But there are too many types of slimes down in here, so there are going to be tar issues very, very shortly. Where does this lead up to? It doesn't look like the little lava areas hurt us too much, so... I guess I'll store that away in my membranes for later. It looks like... This pops out in a previous area. Okay, well, at least we know now, and knowing is half the battle, according to G.I. Joe. We've got seven crystal slimes... I would like to get these settled. I don't know exactly what they're good at or anything like that, but I suppose we'll take a look at the Slimepedia in just a minute. Let's jump up here and run across. Okay, perfect. And then I'm going to try and jump this bridge over here. There is a gap, so just like every other game, if you fall in water, it's not a good thing for you. Apparently water instantly knocks you out, but I think I can sprint jump this. And I was wrong. Dear Lord, that was the worst. A day's rest apparently fixes me right up and I lose my entire inventory, which is a fat bummer and makes me sad. I don't like that at all because I had crystal slimes in my backpack and they were ready to go. Could have brought them on back and made my life a lot easier, but I guess that's the way that it functions for now. Bunch of pogo fruits here though, so that's pretty good. What can I do with the pogo fruits? We got 30 pogo fruits. We also have a mess of heartbeats. That was a really, really good harvest for us. But be aware that the more that you harvest, the less you're going to get out. So time and time again, you're going to get less and less and less. It looks like all the plorts disappeared from in here too. That's a bummer. I probably should have harvested those before I got myself into this situation. But they'll produce double poops for us for a little while. We do have a bunch of chickens over here that appear to have spawned over the course of the last 24 hours. Chickens being the prolific breeders that they are, we need to feed our kitties. So there it is. These are not the hens that the kitties like, though. They like the stony ones. So just keep that in mind as time goes along. We'll want to shift over to stony hens so that we can get the double outputs. Because that is the ultimate function of feeding something something that it likes. So just bear that in mind. I... I'm really, really thinking, let's sell off some of these tabby plorts because I need to make some money. There we go, a little extra 150 bucks, 160 bucks there. I didn't look to see what the price was, but it seems like that's about where we landed. And inside of here, we have rock plorts galore. The safest thing to do would actually be just to pick all of these guys up with the vacuum before we leave. And having 30 rock plorts, we should be able to make a reasonable amount of money from that. Even if the market is very, very low, I think we should be able to convert this into a good profit. Yeah, so it'll be a little bit over 300, I guess. And there you go. We're up to $1,000 sitting inside of our inventory, which will be useful for later. We can't harvest any more pogo fruits instead. Let's go afield here, and let's see what we can figure out with regards to the way we want to orchestrate the rest of our day. I'm perfectly fine with just meandering and doing whatever as time goes along. That's what I think this game does really, really well. It's just working on little tasks, working on little things, setting a goal for yourself, and then maybe, you know. Let's see here. So for the crystal slime, what was up with them? Let's see, they are cousins of rock slimes, they're covered in crowns of shimmering spikes, okay. And they spikes seem to form the crystal slime generating a tremendous amount of internal heat and warping the minerals around them. A weird behavior, they use odd onions. Sharp crystals adorned on the crystal slime's crown will cause a great deal of harm if touched. Worse still, the crystal slime routinely creates large patches of hazardous crystals in the environment around them. Thought to be a means of expelling internal heat, crystal patches are ultra hot and can be shattered to splash with water. Though the crystals produced by slimes are highly unstable, a crystal plort like others is far more pure when used by slime scientists to engineer a variety of metals that are completely transparent. 
The innovations led to metropolitan areas on Earth completely transforming, visually allowing more light to reach the streets and space as a whole, or everything has a chance to breathe. Architects often describe these transparent metals as so totally cooler than normal, boring metals. It is true. If you can have cool translucent metals, I think that's a much better choice than going with just like the old ones that are all opaque and shiny, you know? Who needs opaque shininess when you can have translucent shininess? Indeed, indeed, indeed. What's going on up here? More chickens. I will take those chickens. Chickens, come along with me. You'll be useful for my further adventures. Although maybe not right now. I think if we jump over this rock right here, and then we cut this way, we've got ourselves a phosphor slime that I think needs to be finished off. So let's go ahead and feed him as much as he'll take. Ooh, and just barely. We only had two fruits left. He explodes into a cloud of phosphor slimes. I will pick those up. We'll smash that on the wall because we've got rage issues. And then, there we go. You come with me. Maybe I'll set up a phosphor pen. Maybe that's what I'll do. That sounds like a pretty good plan. We got ourselves another key as well. So we can unlock a new area. Badass as always. Badass as always. I'm really, really excited about it. I love exploring this game. We got stony hens right there. I'm going to try and populate my pen with the hens so that then we can end up with just a cacophony of happy little kitties shouting at the sky and being like, Hooray for our lord and savior, Splattercat, who brought forth the stony chickens that we might chew them and break our teeth off. Up the stairs we go. Not really stairs, but kind of natural stairs. I suppose I could unlock this now. Yeah. And that'll take us on into here. This is like a little Badlands area. It's not really much of a zone in all honesty. It's kind of a transition zone in reality. It takes you from here to the back end of one of the expansion areas of your base, which can be good if you're trying to travel home quickly. It's nice, and there's a couple little things, and there's like a big carrot patch, I think. And there's like a big ass... A large carrot patch, and I think there's a cuberry bush in there somewhere too, and they just grow. And so, if you need those, that's where you would find them in their natural habitat. So, bear that in mind. A couple of stony hens around a little headbutt to the face, but I won't be deterred. I take after my dog, my dog Winston. Ain't nothing bothering me. I take the hit to the face, and then I say, Hey, I don't care about that hit to the face because I can't feel it because I've been bred as a doggy to have no nerve endings in my face. They said that about my dog. My dog, apparently, so if you've got one of the wrinkle face breeds. Like one of the fighting breeds, essentially, like pit bulls, mastiffs, stuff like that. Dogs that were meant to fight. My dog, his face is like porridge. You can just rearrange it however you want. And dogs that have that, apparently they've been bred to have no nerve endings in their faces or whatever. Or at least weaken nerve endings in their faces. So that when they fight and they get bit in the face, they don't care. They just keep going like it doesn't hurt to them. And then they just overwhelm the other dog with pain. You know, not something I approve of. Or when they were fighting with animals too, like wolves, coyotes, stuff like that. When they're fighting prey, things that you were hunting like foxes or badgers or whatever it is that you're hunting, they would take the damage. And still to this day, that's how they hunt pigs in Hawaii. You get like eight or nine dogs and you have the dogs overwhelm the pig, and then you run up and you shoot the pig in the head real fast while the dogs have it tackled. I assume you must go through dogs at a pretty rapid rate though, because boars are not to be messed with. So over here what we need, we need high walls and we need a solar shield for the phosphor collectors, because if they get hit by sunlight, they explode, so you don't want that to happen. They explode and they disappear and they no longer are able to provide you with delicious, delicious poo from which to make energy sources. We'll throw those in there. The point of the stony hens from earlier was to put them in here so that they could breed more gooder. And there it is. I just like to make the English teachers flinch every now and again. Makes me happy. Take a couple more chickens and throw them in here because I'm not sure that everybody got fed. And I'd like them to be future stocked if I could. There are a lot of plorts in there, but I'll deal with that in just a minute. I believe that the phosphor slimes really, really, really like... Pretty sure they like pogo fruits. I'm not 100% sure on that, but we're going to take these and we want to remove those crops because that harvest was a lot weaker than the last one. We'll replant it, and then on this side, we're going to go ahead and feed our stone guys. So there it is. Done, done, and more dunner. Try to pick up all that stuff before we go anywhere else because I do want to make another sale. And then we will spit out the rock slimes. We will hold on to the heartbeat. Actually, no, we'll spit it out. There we go. Heartbeats are disgusting. I don't know if you've ever had a heartbeat, but they're too sweet. Heartbeats are just too sweet, and they ain't leet. So you know what? We leave them at our feet. Leave them in the street. There's a little bit more cash to play around with, which cash is going to be an early game problem here. Like, earning money is the big, big obstacle that you want to work on at the beginning of the game. And then eventually you'll get to the point where you have, like, endless cash, and it doesn't even matter anymore. I. What do I want to spend this money on? 
Maybe an air net, because they can fly. And if we have the air net, that means they gotta attack the air net. And like a boss in a Nintendo game, it'll change colors as they hit it more and more and more. And so you'll know when it's about to go down. But in general, unless you have like a fat rebellion on your hands, they're not gonna be able to kick their way through the air net, so... Just make sure you feed them every now and again, you savage. Make sure you feed them every now and again. How are you gonna let an animal starve on your watch? You're supposed to be your ward. You're supposed to be looking out for them. And you're destroying the slime's faith in our faith in our ability to keep them properly tooled up. It's not nice. It's not nice at all. I'm also gonna buy a jetpack upgrade so that we don't have that jump problem that we ever had before. That way we can get back into the other zone, have a look around, and see what's available while at the same time ensuring that we're still gathering new species to us. So we've got a bunch of letters here we need to look at. We've got a letter from Mochi Miles. Well, well, it seems like another wannabe rancher has signed up for a lonely existence on a faraway space rock. Congrats, Beatrice. I'm Mochi Miles. That's Miles and Tatsuya Miles, the billionaire. I'm here to do important business for my dad, and that doesn't mean I won't make all the rest of these backwater types out here look bad in the process. No one conquers the plurt market like I do, day in, day out. My dad gives me the inside track so look forward to my requesting plorts that I know will make me huge profits later on. So I wish you the best of luck, Beatrix. Maybe you'll even reach second place, and at the very least, you can tell your friends that you helped out the great Mochi Miles in her conquest of the far, far range. Later, Tater. Mochi Miles. Top Rancher. The name's Ogden Ortiz. I'm a slime rancher much like yourself, but I mostly fancy myself as a farmer. I came to the far, far range to grow fruits and veggies the way we used to back on Earth, getting down into the soil and getting your hands dirty. Did you know that carrots improve your night vision? They seriously do. I don't see why all ranchers aren't just gobbling them down every chance that they get. Being lost out at the range at night could be so dangerous. Well, don't let me ramble on you here. We'll be in touch via the range exchange. I tend to only raise slimes that eat fruits and veggies, so expect those kinds of requests from me. Oh yeah, uh, ever heard of the golden ginger? It's a mythical veggie that's said to be the favorite food of the equally mythical gold slime, but some say that neither of them actually exist. Let's see here, we have... Allow me to introduce myself. I am Victor Humphreys, professional slime rancher, slime scientist, and amateur musician. My understanding is that Miss West has already informed you how the range exchange works, so I will stop there. Instead, I'll illuminate you on... What you can expect from my request. As a slime scientist and rancher, I have a tremendous interest in liquid form legion. We share this vast range with the slimes. My studies often keep me from venturing out on the, va or the range daily, and when I find myself short of a particular species, I use the range to fill the gap. Don't worry, though. I'll reimburse you handsomely for your efforts. Good luck, Miss LeBeau. I look forward to life breathed once again in the Twilgers Ranch. Also, I lost my fiddle while fling a feral boom slime. Its value is only sentimental. But should you find it, I'd very much love to be able to play it again. Oh, okay. Keep an eye out for that. And I think we already got Thora West. So, yeah. I think we already got her. Let's head back on out and return to ranch. Good, good. Here we are. We've got ourselves a pretty good supply of pogo fruits. Let's throw those all inside of here because I think I'm probably going to use these to feed our dear little friends over on this opposite side. So how would you gentlemen like some pogo fruit so that I can get wealthy off of the excretions of your hind end. Yes, give them to me. Let me enjoy. Perfecto. Throw these guys back out here. Good. So there it is. We've got ourselves all nice and secured. I think. I'd like to sell those plorts, make a little bit of money. We got 250 bucks. That's not going to be nearly enough to keep us trucking long term, but it is what it is. We definitely got ourselves at least a little bit of starter cash. I mean, if I had 250 in my pocket right now, that'd be a pretty good day for me. I'm like, all right, it's not even two o'clock in the afternoon yet, and I made 250 bucks in a day. I'll tell you what, got to get out of this YouTube business and get into the slime ranching business. That's the one where the real money's at, everybody. And that's where it's hiding. That is for certain. For the most part, we're probably solid over here. Give me that chicken dough. And plort, you can go just lay on the ground with the rest of the plorts. God, it's got to be a walking hazard out here. You really got to gotta get a good stick to clean your boots every single time you're in this area. I'll tell you that much. I suppose we'll go to this zone over here and we'll have a look around and see what we can find. We actually haven't fully explored it yet. So I'm assuming there's little secrets and valuable stuff hidden around that we might be able to work with. Sorry, I forgot one of my little... I forgot one of my little... I don't know. You're working, but what are you working with? Like, who is, in the who is accompanying you in your work? I was doing a bad job of describing it. Doing a bad job of describing it. I'll grab a couple more chickens while I'm over here. I don't have a problem with that. 
Definitely take the roostros. I like to fill my pens up with chickens like crazy stacked. Right, stony chicken right there, but he appears to be kind of stuck in the wall, but I got him out. So no! Damn it, pink slime. Why do you do this stuff to me? And then explodey slime, you just can't. You gotta add insult to injury, don't you? You just can't leave me with what I've got. You gotta take it all from me, dicks. All day long, just straight being douchebags. Through the cave, past the gordo, and then we'll run over here. I don't know if I'm gonna pick up, like, one thing I'd really like to do is replace all of my stone slimes with crystal slimes, maybe. Might be a decent plan. Might be something that'll work out for us. I don't know. I'll keep that in my back pocket for a little bit. Actually, if we get the opportunity, I'll do it. But otherwise, we'll wait on it. Break that crate for the extra cash. Get the stony hands out of there. Very, very nice. And then we'll break you. Take the chickens. And there's a pogo fruit right there. Not something that I'm interested in. Love the explosion graphic, by the way. I think it was really, really well done. Really, really satisfying to look at. Maybe if it had, like, some little cell shaded smoke or something like two-dimensional smoke that went out in every direction that might add to it a little bit but aside from that no complaints from me in the peanut gallery three puddle plorts right there they appear to have been a eaten and a pooping as is slimes are known to do another one over here so that should be another good 200 bucks just from wandering around and picking stuff up as we go through the game good good stuff now we should be able to get over the top of this bridge right here now that we got ourselves a jetpack and so we'll try Looks like maybe there's something up there that leads to a cave off to the left on that side. I love the exploration in this game. Absolutely in love with it. I hope that they actually focus on that as a feature where there's just hidden stuff and fun things like everywhere. That's the best way that I could describe doing it. There we go. Perfecto. And I think up over this hill, is there anything up here? Nay. We can jump off to this side. And we've got another stone gordo over here. I don't recall which one gives us a teleport and which one gives us what's over here. It looks like, oh, just some burned up heartbeats. Never mind then, heartbeats lost. Heartbeats lost. Sad, so sad. Heart beat in the wind. We got our radioactive slimes over here. Our gamma slimes or something like that, I think they're called. I don't remember exactly, but if you stand near them for too long, you start to bleed health. And that's not good. What is that? Oh, we got a thing. An odd onion. Huh. I wouldn't trust this onion even less, though, than a normal onion. Are normal onions known for their untrustworthy nature? I have no idea. I've never done a survey and or a questionnaire regarding the presence and trustworthiness of onions like whether or not you should give them tasks or allow them any puddle slimes over here puddle slimes pooping in the water puddle slimes making wallets hotter puddle slimes they don't have a daughter because they do not breed go slime go slime eh. no i missed i tried so hard failure so sad right now i'm just gonna lapse into my snape voice and potions class is cancelled oh, i'm so sad right now Although, I'm trying to work on, like, a Michael Caine thing right now. I think that's the one that I want to do next. Snape hasn't worked out, so I think I'm going to move on to Michael Caine. Master Wayne. I got I to gotta figure out a way. To, my voice isn't, like, rattled enough as his, though, because I'm not old. And so, anyways, I'll see you on the next episode. We've been looking around for a bit. I think there's a teleporter back here. I'll probably use that to go back to town after we take a look around. Is there anything down that pit right there? What happens down that pit? Debauchery? Nasty sliminess? Okay. Well, yeah, I think I'll leave it right here. I think there's a teleporter on the back end of this map that I'm going to use to go back to base. And with that said, we will rejoin for the next episode after I do just that. A little bit more cash inside of that one right there. Another odd onion. Cool, cool stuff. I will see you all in the next episode of Slime Rancher. Thank you for stopping on in, everybody. It's been really, really fun so far, and I look forward to seeing you when next we join together. Bye bye